concept of Holy Islam is unlike anything you know we have available in any other religion because of concept of true monotheism meaning worshiping the same God all sorts of different interpretations personally I don't have my own interpretation but I know Muslims I know Jews I know Christians yes while they all originate from the same mm. core belief they've split off mm. over the centuries to have their own personal interpretations of what God is mm. so what we say is very simple we don't go by what individual actually explain and what individual actually does individual will always have an individual opinion we go with by the proofs and evidences so any religious claim or any sort of religious claim meaning that's something people take very closely for themselves and that should not be based on subjective and and some sort of um, hearsay understanding it should be rather sound proof sound evidences and then we have we should have to have back it up information in order to believe it so cut cut to the story short so when we look at the creation of mankind when god created mankind so that time god so the creation do you agree that in one point creation didn't exist yes right so that creation comes into existence so that who is responsible for that creation comes into existence god so therefore the human didn't exist with God. So human came later on. So therefore, if the human comes later on, then Jesus come cannot be a God. Okay. All right. do, do you see my point? Because the person, Jesus Christ, we are referring, he is someone who eat food, who's actually depend on sustenance. So therefore, I cannot say he is God himself. Right. Because okay. he has the attribute of human being. Okay. All right. Do you go by that? So this is where we part from Christianity, where we say, when the Christian claims that he is a God manifested in a human form, I, we would say, look, uh, the idea is not that God, what can God do and what can't God do? God can do anything. But the idea is God cannot do that thing that doesn't befit him. Meaning, for example, can God lie, right? But it doesn't befit him. Why should God lie? Mm. The question, yeah, why should he lie? He's in power of everything he's yeah. in control of everything why should he like so there are things that doesn't apply to God so it's not that he can't do but we say it doesn't apply to God it doesn't suit his majesty so therefore becoming a son is not something befit to his majesty okay do you go by that well I mean like I said earlier because this is the one of the very important distinction and that cannot be taken lightly the reason why because the whole salvation based on that concept. Yeah. So therefore, this idea must be understood with the reasoning that we have. And God will know what type of reasoning we have. And he will be, he will be the true judge because he knows everything about us. Okay. So what do your understanding? Can God be a man or God is unlike a man? Unlike a man. That's it. So we, we come to a, a common grounding that God is not a man because God is unlike the creation. Okay. We, we, we can logically, without go to the scripture, we can logically go to yeah. that, right? Then we would say, why God created us? That's the second question follows. What, what do you think? Well, I, either there is a purpose or there is no purpose. And my heart... I would believe that there is no purpose. No purpose. For creation. However, I come to the point where I die, and it turns out, oh hey, there's a God. Mm. Hey, we had a purpose on earth. I wouldn't be surprised. So, but, uh, so uh, let's recap back uh, what you said. A uh, very important point that you go by no purpose. Yes, sir. Right. So in order to, so this is a, a, an understanding from your, from your life experience, right? So is there anything in your life you see a thing that we have no purpose? Can you define anything? Uh, I mean, look around. Mm. I mean, we have big cities, we've made this lovely park, we're mm. having the speaker's corner. Everything for a purpose. 
in the grand scheme of things, it has a purpose to us. Yes, like for example, let me uh, let me make it more simpler yeah. for for our, our understanding. So when you wear, wear you wearing the jacket, yeah. You the reason of you wearing that jacket is to protect you from the cold threat yes. and the wind and everything. And I do the same, right? So we have a purpose. The jacket has a purpose. So your shirt has a purpose. Everything around, everything that you hold within yourself has a purpose. For me, personally, yes. Yes. I mean, I'm not saying this is a general understanding. It's not, I'm saying that someone can challenge it. It's, it's an unchallengeable idea. Yeah. I'm saying something with authority that everyone agrees by that. Now, if we go agrees with everything has a purpose within yeah. our surrounding and the reality that everything we are around, then should you not say that it is absurd to believe that I have no purpose? No. Because no, because look how we think is, we go with the probabilistic idea, let's say. If I have 100, 101 things, let's say 101 thing in the world and I found 100 things has purpose and the only one thing which remains about your life yeah. would you conclude that 101 thing will be have purpose to me yes that's it so then then you actually retract your position to come to a purpose however in the grand scheme of things so individually yes things will have a purpose to the person looking at the grand scheme of things say the universe say the entire planet does that purpose apply as well yes it does i'll tell you why it does apply and maybe you can think about it later on for example does rain has a relationship with us yes it does so that means it has a purpose for us because if the rain doesn't come the vegetation will not grow and we will not have drinking water and then we'll be dead then without water we cannot survive right so it's very simple so we see that collectively everything has a purpose on it so what we are saying as a human life now we establish there is a god and god everything created for a purpose then it implies just like 101 example that if 100 things i've already identified have purpose then i am left alone now how can i make decision whether i have a purpose or not by how i uh, figured out and how i configured then obviously it's leading that i have a purpose then this purpose now logically i know that purpose but now if the external also claims suggest that that indeed we have the purpose and then if, if we investigate those external claims and then we come to a common ground that no, indeed we have purpose, should you not then follow that purpose? You should, however, how would those purposes relate to the grand scheme, say God or yeah. heaven or hell and yes. Yeah. So I think it's always to go with by foundation. Our foundation, we already already established that foundation is God exists, we exist and the reality exists and we have a purpose. The step number two would be, how do I know my purpose? We established that is a purpose, but we do not know what is the purpose. Now, if this purpose was given to individual to decide, then this world will have chaos and confusion. Because each one of us will be designing our own purpose of life, which can be contradictory and which, can, which, which will be disturb the balance of the society. Like for example, if someone say, my purpose was to sing in the late night. And another person say, all of us say, no, our purpose in the night time is to sleep throughout the night. Now imagine the one who defined that his purpose is to sing. He's actually disturbing others. So we will have not have only a society. Do you see? So that's why God created everyone with given these tools of reasoning and tools of this thinking and pondering and reflecting. And then he given us all of us to say. And then he communicated his message through a messenger. Do you agree that the steps we are now we are taking from purpose? Now this purpose, information of what is my purpose, has been communicated to us as a human being, by human being, from God. Potentially, but then how would you explain, so saying God, 
the purpose has been communicated. Mm. How would you explain the various different, say, beliefs or different, even yeah. in the same belief system, you know, say for Muslims, there's various different sects of Muslims, or Christianity, yeah. various different I mean, we sects. can go by that. That's yeah, a yeah. beautiful question. So first of all, we agree that God created us. Now, if God is one already, and God has no partner, as I demonstrated before, then we are not concerning any other religion because we narrowed down our search and are now we are looking into Islam. And if that makes sense, we accept it because the concept of God Islam is unlike anything you know we have available in any other religion because of concept of true monotheism, meaning worshipping the same God. If God is alone, then we should not worship any man. Do you see? Uh, can you give me one? One Quran, yes. I have. Oh, you have? I have a Quran. Oh, okay. you have a Quran. Yeah, yeah, yeah. thank you. Yeah. yeah. So the question is, now, we look at the first man, Adam, and all of the prophets and messengers. Now, there is a great argument in the Quran. There are many, many great arguments. But one of the profound arguments I find, in this is in chapter 2, verse 135 onwards, where Allah is mentioning, so, you know, often between Jews, Christian and Muslim, we are debating about which one is correct, right? Now, in order to know who is correct, we need to follow the tradition where it originates from. We need to go back to the time to see which one actually communicated correctly by God. Now, if we disagree with the Moses, Jesus and Muhammad, three of them. Now, if you go back to Abraham, then problem we can solve it there. Because Abraham was didn't came after them. He came long before them. Now, what was the belief of Abraham? His actual religious belief? Yes. I don't know. So, Abraham cannot be a Jew. Why? Because Judaism came... Yeah. Yes. He was way before Judaism. He can't be a Christian because... Too early. Yeah. Too early. Then what was his religion? Now... He was once someone who was worshipping God alone, without any partner. Now, which religion you will find in this world follow the Abraham footstep in belief? There's only one. I don't know you're going to say. Muslim. I want you to hear. I don't want to say that, my friend. But at least, at least you know, shake me yeah, oh, with the yeah, hands sorry, that, sorry. that we agree that Islam is the religion of Allah. And we are not saying Abraham is the first Muslim, we believe Adam is the first Muslim. When we're talking about the religion of Abraham, Abraham is a different Sharia, meaning different code of life. Jesus has different, Moses has different, all of the problems, there are slight differences with, in the Sharia. But there is no differences in belief in the religion. Of course, yeah. That's why Every time God, why God sent so many prophets and messengers? So that every time humanity divert from worshipping something else other than God, God returned with a, uh, resend a prophet to reinstate the message again, not the new message. Okay. So how, how would you explain, say, the different prophets and messengers having, way at the core, the same beliefs, yes. sometimes having various different messages or yes. different interpretations? Yeah. yeah. Would you say they um, interpret the message wrong or...? No, no, no. No? No. So when we talk about prophet and when you talk about the community, they are thinking about the prophet. So there is two distinctions. There is an important distinction here. So when I am saying that God, when God send messengers, they, they have a unique message to send to the community. And sometimes go by, people change and twist the message. So when we are saying what is the belief of Jesus Christ and what is the belief of, about Jesus Christ, belief of Jesus Christ is sir, he was as someone who submitted to God, meaning if someone submits his will to God, he's becoming Muslim. But religion about Jesus is Christianity. He said worship only one God. But if you look at the belief of Christianity, which is later developed, this is not the belief he preached. This is the uh, belief people preached about him. So it's not the blame of the prophet. Who should we blame? Blame the community they received from, right? Yes, exactly. So in that essence, 
Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam was the last of the prophets. Came to uh, what was actually preached by Jesus Christ. Did he preach Christianity? No, he didn't. Did he preach Judaism? No. He was preaching people to worship there is only one God. So bringing back everyone to the true monotheism that Noah, that Abraham, that Adam, that yeah, that everyone was preaching. So this was the central message. And then, of course, we have Prophet Muhammad. Uh, I don't know how much. Do you know about him? Yeah, uh, like, what do you think about him? I mean, he was a, he was a prophet, of course. Yeah. Um, he was a very deeply spiritual man. Um, a lot of his ideas seemed to be quite good, you know, yeah. what he believed. Um, like many of the prophets in the various different religious books, you know, uh, they were obviously very good at commanding a crowd mm. and uh, getting believers and followers. Very good orators, very good at speaking, very good at getting people to listen to them. So, yeah, I think that's about as much as I know about him. I know a little bit of the history of him. But no, I mean, what? since we come to a uh, lot of things we have agreed so far that, of course, the true monotheism in Islam. Now, in order to follow Islam, is it convincing enough for you? Or do you need further proof to follow that? No, no. No, I, I think I would need further proof. Further proof, yeah. Like, say, for example, so we have something called prophecy of Prophet Muhammad. So if you accept Prophet Muhammad is a prophet, do you need evidence for him? Or do you need further evidence? Well, it depends on what I would personally define as evidence. a prophet. Yeah. Like in terms of, yeah. say, your belief, you believe. Like, for example, let's say you want to follow Islam. Let me put it very simple. What will convince you to become that he is indeed a prophet? What would you like to see in him? I? Yeah. Let's say you come to a conclusion that there is only one God and he should be worshipped. You are 80% closer to the Islam. If Prophet Muhammad is the final messenger of God, then the conclusion is done. It's a matter of when you want to take it, the steps to become a Muslim, right? Now, my question to you, like, what would you look to him to follow him? Well, for me, in my terms, I wouldn't personally take him on board as the one sole prophet. There's just so many. No, I'm not saying he is the only prophet, huh? but he is the last and final prophet. Right. We are not in the time of Abraham. He was for sent for his people. Jesus was sent for children of Israel. Each time prophet was sent, they are sent for their own community. Since Muhammad is sallallahu alaihi wasallam is the last and final prophet meaning he is our prophet meaning i am and you we all living in his time so he is our prophet now in order to accept him or reject him we, in order to reject i mean i normally say in order to reject something you need to also know what are you rejecting in order to accept something you also need to know what are you accepting so we are in in a position that okay if i say i want to reject prophet muhammad sallallahu then i must have a valid reason to reject him if I accept him, I, I should have a sound reasoning why should I accept him. Of course, yeah. So what would be your criteria? There are so many evidences I can provide. But I would like to see what you are clinging towards. Because you are a seeker of the truth, right? I would say you are a genuine person. You are seeking the truth, right? Uh, I accept all truth. All truth. Like, but I mentioned that maybe we can appreciate some good values. doesn't necessarily mean that they are true package. Yeah. Because when we rationally compare with the evidence that we have available, then we can really see whether it doesn't really make sense both package. And if that one package doesn't make sense, then you can reject others. However, what really matters at the end of the day to me is say you believe Muhammad is the last prophet for you. Christians believe Jesus is their final prophet. Um, but I, I think more yeah. than uh, uh, looking at more than uh, I mean if you look at uh, something more generally then it would not actually you would not ref 
reflect on you. I'm saying every individual is having a journey. Oh, yeah. We can talk about for everyone. Yeah. But as end of the day, I have a life and I will go to the grave and I will have to face question. If there is a real purpose, then I have to be prepared for it. So rather than looking at that view of generalizing view, let's look at individualistic view of how I should answer the question that in front of me. Like for example, a, a Christian can follow Christianity. But as we demonstrated that yes, he is allowed to follow his religion. That's not a problem. That's his right. We should not, Islam said, there is no compulsion in religion. Allow, let them, let him follow his faith. But does it really mean that this is correct for you? Not for him, for you. But you realize, and you, I mean, we demonstrated that the man cannot be God. So therefore, whatever he is following, be respectful, but you know it's not correct. Then this is how we narrow down our search to know the truth. Now imagine if the truth and falsehood together, how would you know the truth if you don't reject the false? This is one of the idea, right? Same way, if you don't compare and contrast, you don't know what is good and bad. Imagine if you say, this jacket is the best jacket, without comparing the other, you may be fooled when you really go to the shopping mall, right? How would we know the truth while living though? Because how would we know the truth in life? Every religion seems to say that the truth will come in the afterlife. No, How no. are you able to prove that the truth is in this yeah. world? So that is the question. That is the question I actually asked. Because how do you know Islam, the Prophet Muhammad is the final messenger? Because we established already the ground of oneness of God. Life has a purpose and God communicated with humans. Now, in order to accept why do you accept your mother testimony? I don't. I mean, let's could say be true, could be not. Okay, tell me who you accept. Is, is there anyone you accept his or her testimony? No, no one. No. Why not? Because anything has its own unique viewpoint on it. No, no, no. I mean, in terms of if your mother tells, phone you and tell you, I cooked chicken for you. Would you doubt her that she didn't move the chicken? There's always a chance that she might not. Right. Now, if, let me give you a scenario. If a man never lied his entire life, never lied, lie in, in his entire time, entire life, will he lie? How's, how is that provable? So the proof is available looking at whatever information we have and the writings of many many non-muslims and the muslim alike concluded that indeed prophet muhammad is the most trustworthy and truthful person existed in seventh century arabia and that is a general consensus or understanding a hater may say oh something you know a hater you will find even you know, people hate angels. Angels are, we believe, they are sin, you know, sinless, right? They don't disobey God, right? So, in a sense that you will find hater of everything. But as a human being, we need to examine what what has the claim. And if the claim, if I, the conclusion of the claim is correct, then, then it's your duty whether you to accept it or reject it. That then you have the belief comes, but belief should not be based on uh, desire, rather convincing evidences. That's why I'm saying, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, he was known to be the best person in terms of his trustworthiness and truthfulness, and he was he fulfilled like he was a state leader, so he showed how to run a state. He was a husband, so he knows, I mean, he showed us what, how to be a best husband. He was an orphan, so he was an example for orphan. And orphan might say, you know, oh, you don't understand my pain. But a prophet, he was himself an orphan. He lost his father before he was born. So he didn't see his father. He didn't see his mother. Like, his mother also died very early, like he was, when I think, if I remember, a few months old. His mother passed away, so he was a, he was uh, grew up without parent. 
uncles and grandfather they are looking after him. So we look at his testimony like even those people who doesn't believe in him, doesn't believe his message, but they used to keep their belongings to him. Why would you keep your belongings to him, your belongings to someone else who doesn't follow your faith? Why do you think? Simple. Trust. If you give me your money, knowing that I'm trustworthy, you will give me money because I'm trustworthy. And then this was a known in the community that he was an Al-Amin or a Sadiq, meaning he was the most trustworthy and most truthful. So therefore, by default, we have he has an acceptability about himself. Number two, he said so many prophecies. Prophecy is something that the things will happen in the future. These are the proofs. Things happen in the future. Now let's set up the criteria. If someone makes a claim, five claim, and three become truth, and two false, we can happily reject him. If a person made hundred claims, all of them came true, can that be a coincidence? Yeah. How? I mean, that that would be extra. Uh, I would say this is called hyper skepticism. It could be a coincidence. It could not be a coincidence. No, like I'm I'm saying. Yeah. I have not only one. I mean, I have so many things leading towards the correctness. The man never lied. The man. Whatever he is claiming, that's not a new message. This is, has been said by 124,000 people. So I can't say he's an, this is an alienated message, just because I don't know. And then he, he was predicting so many things and that came into the future. And that this information can't be known without uh, this was come from God, meaning God is no future. Oh, you always know. Then how how did he getting those information? Either coincident, coincident. I mean, always we know that whenever uh, people make a claim, a liar always get exposed. So yeah, no, no, potentially. I'm, I mean, we have evidence that if liar in one point of life is bound to expose. He never lied in his entire life. When he makes the claims about the unseen reality, this was not also absurd because we look at the previous prophets and messenger, they did have those miraculous features, God given them so that they can be acceptable to the community. Imagine if someone say, I am good and I'm best and I'm truthful, but you don't see any miraculous things. You will not be confident about whether he's from God or not. You would say he's literally a just good person. So you would need the extra evidence to believe in him. Yeah. If you're looking for that extra evidence, yes. you would need to see that evidence right. to take that on. Right. right. Yeah. Now we have something I'm going to think you through. Now we have something today's date available to see whether Prophet Muhammad is the correct messenger or not. And this is called Quran. Why did I say Quran? Quran is a book. Yes, it's a guidance book. And this is has been. I don't know whether you are aware, this is the only books in the face of the art which has been memorized by millions. Yeah, yeah. I you know that? Yeah. And has been preserved. Is there any other scripture preserved? Preserved? For centuries? Yes. In terms of the Abrahamic religions? No, no. And other religions? And, and, yes. No, no, no. Yeah. There is no... So we have, when we were talking about Abrahamic religion, we're talking about the religion that shared the lineage shared by the people, not the belief that shared by the people. Lineage shared by we always say Abraham not a Jew nor a Christian. So therefore I don't like to agree that Abrahamic religion. We can say okay, we share the lineage, but Abraham was not a Jew nor a Christian. So I can't say he's Abrahamic. He is his Judaism and Christian, he's a Muslim. So in that sense, um, I'm, I'm back, coming back to the argument. When Quran, you can look it up that has many challenges there. And this is an objectively look into it. This is our objective challenges. Allah said, this is if this is from not from God, then you'll be able to produce it. Since it is from God, so you can't produce it. 
If you think this is from Muhammad, then everyone should gather together and produce it. Why you are unable to do so? That's, that's the question. So that's the challenge in the Quran. Are you familiar with this? No. no. So like, uh, for example, uh, Allah mentioned that uh, the smallest chapter, right? Okay. Yeah, so for example, here in the Quran, So, for example, like um, how Allah, um, uh, so for example, here, so the smallest chapter is, uh, where is this? So we have three lines, yes? Okay. So these three lines. So the challenge is to make a small chapter like, a, a chapter like, and the smallest chapter is three lines. And there are many attempts has been done. So the challenge is there. And when he was, here in the art was 14 and around four, nearly 1500 years old and the challenge is that to produce a chapter like it. so the challenge was sent to every community just like you know we have boxing challenge or coffee and tracing right so the challenge is sent out to all over the world and challenge that if you think this is muhammad peace be upon him producing then i mean if a human being produce it just simple me and you, all the intellectual people sit down together and we can make a better one. Why all of us and the linguistic people and a lot of, you know, a lot of them actually challenge? What was the outcome? Did they meet the challenge of the Quran? And I'm, I'm telling you, I want you to look into this. Okay. I but, yes, and I'm telling you, they become laughing stock because we have some of the uh, we have recorded some of them they try to imitate it and they they are all over the place so they were trying to make the smallest chapter yes they are trying to imitate these three lines and they they done some of them and they become laughing stock okay meaning they cannot meet the challenges so what are the challenges challenges is to produce the stylistics the produce the message produce how Quran um, Quranic message and, and, and Quran doesn't go with like a fairy tale stories. Quran talks about the true stories. So it has to be has truth, it has to make sense, it has to go with the construction and how the Quran constructed. So it has certain features. Now Allah is asking to produce something like it in a way that you can challenge the Quran. But what was the general consensus of the scholarship? What was their reaction? Since you don't know Arabic, you'll have to rely on the linguistic scholars, what they have to say. The translations. And what they say. They say, this is not a word of a human being. Not them. In the time of Prophet Muhammad, the people are the, the, the master in literacy. They said, Laisa has a kalabil bashar. This is not, not a word of a human being. How come the greatest poet are around Prophet Muhammad? And they were agreeing that this cannot be producible. So, just to bring it back, what what was the what's in the smallest chapter? So basically, yeah. let, let me summarize. This is this is called Surah Al Kausar. So when Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam he has a, a, he has a son who passed away, and and then and and then. The Quraysh, those who are opposing Prophet, they said Abtar means uh, God has cut the relationship with him, means Abtar, he cut the relationship. So when God is hearing that, that people are saying to Prophet Muhammad that he, he, uh, uh, they are saying to Prophet, yeah, God has shunned the relationship with you. So God is hearing it because God, God hears everything, God sees everything. Yeah? That's how uh, the concept of God. So Allah revealed to the Prophet Muhammad. What he is assuring Prophet Muhammad, he said, Inna a'atwayna kal kawsar, inna, indeed, a'atwayna, we granted you Muhammad al uh, kawsar. So al kawsar is a heavenly river. Okay. So this is a reward. Allah is straight away reminding Prophet that I will, I have granted you a river. It's something for pleasure, something a reward, some, uh, something that you will get in. Then what did he say? So pray and sacrifice to your Lord alone. 
Meaning, Allah is telling an important message to ensure you pray and sacrifice, meaning slaughter the animal. Okay. So we have uh, in Islamic tradition we slaughter animal in tenth of Jilhijjah, which just after the you know end of Hajj, which have tenth day of Jilhijjah we yeah. slaughter animal, right? And in shani akahu al Now Allah is telling something. So what people say to Prophet Muhammad that you will your you will be cut off. They said you will be shunned by God. As you do it. Or go against. No. The, what people were saying to Prophet Muhammad, because your son passed away, now you don't have genealogy. No one will represent you. So God break the connection with you. Ah, okay. So they were saying your abtar means you are cut off. So what Allah returned back, in shani al abtar. It's not the Prophet who will be cut off. Those only the one who hates is truly cut off from any goodness. Meaning Allah returned it. Means turn the table. You are saying I will be cut off. No, it's not me. You will be cut off. Okay. Look at the message. It's amazing message. It's concise message. But this is a true message based on a true incident. So you would say that those lines there. Line lines there. Kind of encompass in all the. So the meaning. Yeah. So yeah. yeah. The framework. So it. It is responding to a story. Allah is responding to a story in a way that is truthful. It has a stylistic in it and it has a lot of features in it that asking that produce something like it. And this can bring it back as well to what we were discussing about earlier. That distills, you know, the beliefs of the Quran. No, but my question is the belief is something we impose or we have either it's a blind belief so belief can be many dimensional it can be blind belief can be based on some research or based on some evidences the question is what type of belief you want to hold for yourself and as a muslim i'm saying we are we've been told not to follow blind belief because allah is if he wanted us to have a blind belief, he would say just believe in the messenger. Why he is sending books with evidences and proofs in there? Why? So that we can contemplate. Although would you not agree that those three lines there, mm -hmm. what encompasses the Quran about all of the you know, extras or drilling down and getting more information, I mean, that's really what a lot of religions preach and a lot No, no, no. There is no religion. There is no religion, not single books. I'm making it bold and clear. Yeah. No, I mean just those three Let's lines. Yeah, three so three lines. lines. Yeah. The, the Quran gives us challenges. That yeah. Produce something like it. If you are truthful and bring your community or whoever they wanted to challenge it or make them witness that or oh, you actually done it. Now, in order to look at, first of all, if a book makes such a claim then and make a challenge, then you can challenge. If the other books doesn't say any challenges, then there is no room for challenge because the book doesn't challenge it. The book is objectively challenging you to ensure that it has something that other books doesn't. Do you see my point? The Quran is offering something that other tradition doesn't offer. Meaning, objectively, it can prove not the message from God, also stylistic and how it's been told. That shows that this is indeed protected. That's what the main message. Perhaps, can I just... Yeah. So, so we are granted, okay, goodness, heavenly favors. So, if you look at, I'll, I'll, I'll show you. I'll, 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 I'll give you some picture. Let yeah. me demonstrate to you more. Let me demonstrate to you more. If you look at these three lines, yes. Mm -hmm. So we have every letter. Can you see this last yeah. last letter, which is finished with R, Ra, which is yeah. Can you see that? Yeah. Can you see this letter? It's exactly the same, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Yes. Oh, it's line. the same. Yes. Yeah. Right. Let's look at the second word. This is called Af. Yes. Can you see this? Second yeah, word? Yeah. Second at end with? So they're carrying the same letters yeah, across yes. each line? Yeah, and the second word end with this. 
And you know this Ra, this letter, is the tenth letter in the alphabet. So if you Alif, Alif, Ba, Ta, Sa. So these are the letters. And the tenth letter is this letter. Okay. So yes. What's the significance of I'll, tenth? I'll, I can, I'll show you. So if you count the number of words, three here, mm -hmm. three here, six. How many here? Four. Mm -hmm. How many word? Ten word. Mm -hmm. And the theme is used as a number tenth letter, which is uh, Ra. Now this itself and enough to show you that that cannot be mutable. That enough. I'll tell you there's many, many features. Yeah. And, you know, it talks about Fasallili Rabbika Wanha. So pray to your Lord and sacrifice Him alone. This happened on the tenth day of Jul Hijjah. Mm. R is the tenth letter. The letter has ten, that this is ten word in the, the whole surah. Ra is the, which is the last letter, which is the tenth in the alphabet. And it makes a unique message in a way that is truth. It has all the features. This is, imagine, <coughs> these are the human beings. We found out these features. And there are so many features of that. I didn't tell you. And your mind will be mind boggling. How can they be possible? Now, having that, all this feature I've just demonstrated you, is enough to convince you that no, this is, cannot be producible. And now I can assure it that why the Arabs agree. Why didn't, can't they, why they failed the challenge? I'll be, I'll be finishing in five minutes. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So I'm going to make a move. So, okay. so keeping this in mind, this is something, an amazing thing for, for you to investigate. Okay, look, this is not just a, a game going on. This is an objective challenge sent out by God. And God kept it preserved for me to look into this, to reflect on it. And now if this message is saved like that, if the message comes like that, that no man has challenged it. No way near to that challenge mind-boggling then it poses a serious question to everyone in the world that are we going to reject that message on that note i'll leave it what do you think about that very interesting very interesting i uh, i mean it's uh, quite interesting to listen to you talk about that you've obviously got a lot of knowledge about no i mean it. i i try to because look, we're here to share the message of islam and, yeah. and that's why we are I mean, as I mentioned to believe that whenever we follow, we should not follow anything blind. We should follow something which is based on evidence and proofs and with sound reasoning. All of them three should be present. I cannot follow some willy nilly belief without evidences. So on that note, I, I wish you all the best and I invite you to Islam to look into it because Islam talks about there will be hell, heaven and hellfire. And Allah talks about this life is a test. And I'll, I have given you enough evidence for you to re re reflect upon. And I ask Allah that Allah guide you to Islam since you are a seeker of the truth. And look into it, you know. I wish you all the best. I wish you all the best as well. It's great to listen to you. And, uh, it's a great to listen to you. And, and, because, uh, and uh, sorry, I had to carry it away uh, with explaining things because these require some explanation. I just, of course, of course. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You've but thank you for listening of, anyway. Yeah, you've obviously got a lot of passion with the subject and a lot yeah, of knowledge. And, 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 and the, it's always that, interesting listening to other people's beliefs. Oh, of course. Hearing what, yeah, you know, yeah. the knowledge they have behind them. Yes. And you've obviously got a wealth of knowledge behind you. I mean, I try. I'm, I'm, so, I'm, I'm, I'm a student. I mean, I'm learning, you know. I, mean, I don't say, I mean, I, I know enough, but I'm, I'm learning. Whatever I know, I shared with you. Yeah. But, you know, I wish you all the best. And think about that. Look, it's a serious message and it has a serious consequence. And we're talking about heaven and hellfire. Yeah. I mean, it, it would be too late if I just wait for, sit and, and see what happened in the grave. And if that really happened, and there will be things happen. Allah mentioned in the Quran, there are a group of people tell Allah, the Allah send me back, call Rabbi Jun, send me back so that I can do what I supposed to do. Allah said it would be too late. Now he says it would be too late. Yeah, because Allah knows that even if you even if you send again, you do the same. So Allah, that's why Allah didn't want to punish you until and unless He established against you the evidences, the hujjah. That's that's quite interesting. That's yes. that's yes. very very core to what a lot of 
Buddhist belief yeah. with the being brought back to do the same again, you know, the cycle of But then, of, uh, of course, Buddhism is more of a philosophy, to be honest. It, it, it doesn't really... Depending that, what way that, you look at no, it. No, 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 I mean, in, in terms of the eight way they have, yeah. they don't have a concept of the salvation and heaven and hellfire. It's more of they philosophy and, and the spirituality. No, no, they do. What they do. Um, if you look into some of the other schools of Buddhism, if you look yeah. into, say, like Thai or like Southeast Asian Buddhism, mm -hmm. they actually have hell, heaven, gods. They have a fan But is that, is that real or the spiritual? That's the important... To them, it's real. No, it's not. It's not. To them, it's real. I, I spoke yeah. to one of the Buddhism, and correct me if I'm wrong, and this was a, a spirituality. So it, it's not like a reality thing happened. Of course, I can be mistaken, or the person can be mistaken, but I don't know about it, you know. But what I am saying, that I have given you enough understanding for you to reflect on the reality. And Islam is a very practical religion. It gives you solution in all different directions. And you will find everything about Islam has an immense amount of wisdom. And we don't believe this is from human, this is from Allah. And we have accepted Allah made destination heaven. And Allah also made, destina made a destination hellfire, those who reject constantly. Imagine all of your life you receive all the blessing of Allah. Imagine if someone say, I want your kidney and liver. Someone say, I need, uh, I'll give you two billion pounds. I need two of your kidneys. Would you give two, two kidneys? If they gave me two billion pounds, yeah. I'd be dead. Correct. <laughs> so that means that no money, no money. However, that money would be very good to to my family. No, I mean, of so course, yeah. If someone was saying two billion pounds. No, but pounds, your life is going. Do you care for your life? If it's two billion pounds to my family, then. So you, you're going to surrender your life? And it gives someone else a new life? Yeah, yeah I mean, that, that's a really good. But, yeah. I mean, if you look at the real scenario, when you were really given to that. However, that shows, you would need to. that shows the how important our organs are, mm. the how important our life is. And this is given as a free, as, as something we should enjoy. You never paid this money to anyone to have this life. It was given to you. So should we not be grateful to the one who given you? And we established this is the God. And Allah sent prophets and messengers so that you can worship Him correctly. And he given me the, prof uh, the prophets and messenger would come many, many evidences. And I've just demonstrated with the Quran. I didn't even explain the so many claims of Prophet Muhammad Islam and the prophecy that he did. And you can look it up. And I think the discussion is getting too long. And <laughs> yeah. I wish you all the best. Yeah, I, I think, um, subhanAllah. Uh, thank you. Um, the brother actually looking into different faiths. And he has a general idea that, you know, all religion is good and all religion have some good things in it so everything is correct and i've demonstrated to him not all the religion can be correct because if the beliefs contradict one another they cannot be correct at the same time so now we in order to find out the correct belief we need to investigate it and i have give, given him some some of the evidences and proof for islam for him to think about may allah guide him to islam please make dua